Sigma INFJs are outsiders with a skin and a lot of curiosity about how the world functions. Some of these phenomena may have their causes known to them, but others are still a mystery. 10 things that a Sigma INFJ will never understand are as follows. Number 10, wanting to succeed yet constantly putting things off. Sigma INFJs find it hard to comprehend why so many individuals aspire to succeed, yet so few are prepared to put in the necessary work. While many people desire improvement, many few are prepared to put in the necessary effort. Additionally, because they have so much time remaining, Sigma INFJs are unable to relate to anyone who idles away. For obvious reasons, procrastinators find it difficult to work with Sigma INFJs. Procrastinators squander other people's time in addition to their own. It should come as no surprise that they annoy a Sigma INFJ spouse, family member, or friend as they spend time on unimportant things instead of concentrating on their priorities. They naturally disagree with the most industrious and hardworking personality types. Sigma INFJs don't have the least amount of care. All they want is for things to be resolved quickly. They are understanding of people's pains and struggles while others are preoccupied with finding excuses, yet they detest individuals who cancel plans for no good reason. Ninth, when people act contrary to their words. People not doing what they say is another issue that eludes a Sigma INFJ. Why would they say any of those things in the first place if they were not going to follow through on them? If that's not their intention, then why do they sound so confident about them? Sigma INFJs find it hard to comprehend why people feel confident enough to say things they don't mean to say, and then conveniently forget about it when they are asked about it. Though it's completely true, these slick talkers can't help but feel that they can convince Sigma INFJs to believe what they're saying. Sigma INFJs are able to doubt statements even after spending hours listening to them appear plausible. Why? Because they are able to tell when someone is not being sincere in their statements. Their keen sense of intuition allows them to spot naive optimists and empty-headed talkers. Have you ever interacted with these persons as a Sigma INFJ? Eighth, the propensity of people to please others. Every day, the Sigma INFJ is surrounded by people pleasers, whether at work, in the classroom, or somewhere else. These people take actions intended to win the approval of others. They are readily swayed by social influences to the point that they betray and disgrace their friendships. Similarly, some individuals will stop at nothing to fit in, including lying, being conceited, and compromising their morals in order to avoid confrontation or get along with others. They can pretend to enjoy the same foods, music, places, and pastimes as other people. There's something that Sigma INFJs never get. To them, it just doesn't make sense. Why must a person live just one life in order to make an impression on others? They wonder. The seventh is a lack of emotional intelligence. Sigma INFJs simply don't anticipate some individuals to be as narcissistic and self-centered, even though they are aware that not everyone is as emotionally sensitive and sympathetic as they are. Some people deliberately avoid communication, which suggests relationship selfishness. This is a waste of time for the Sigma INFJ and a disrespectful way to present their argument. People who lack emotional intelligence act as though they don't understand what the Sigma INFJ is saying or suggesting. Why? Because they detest the mindset of the Sigma INFJ. The accuracy of the Sigma INFJ's assumptions bothers them. They don't care to learn about the views, attitudes, or beliefs of the INFJ, thus they won't acknowledge their existence. They consequently deliberately ignore what they have to say. How do you handle emotionally unavailable people as a Sigma INFJ? Using sarcasm to brush off meaningful interactions is number six. INFJ Sigmas have a tendency to take things seriously. They think everything has its proper time, even though they appreciate other people's humor. However, sarcasm and humor are not the same thing. It undermines the apparent coherence and thoughtfulness of the conversation. It undercuts the need for and sense of community and seemingly profound talks. Unfortunately, sarcasm can emerge from unexpected sources, especially when the Sigma INFJ is deeply engaged in a conversation. Sigma INFJs find it incomprehensible that some people would do this. Even more harmful are sarcastic communicators who deceive critical thinkers into thinking they are prepared for a discussion, and then use their lack of respect to criticize them. 
The fifth tip is to embellish and change stories. Stories that are exaggerated to create needless drama or to conveniently avoid responsibility don't make sense to Sigma INFJs. The Sigma INFJ's intuition is particularly good at picking up on manufactured narratives and overblown feelings. That does not mean that they do not extend an olive branch to everyone, even their enemies. All they know is that they sense it, even though they don't know why. And they'll cut the conversation short if they see dishonesty. They don't tolerate hyperbole. Stories from other people have to be true if they are to be respected. They might pay attention to someone lamenting their unpleasant encounters and violent partnerships. Still, they often ask themselves, are they telling the truth or are they embellishing the tale? Or are they the ones who are being harmed by this? Or are they only trying to win my favor? Fourth, needing to use deception to obtain what they desire. Sigma INFJs can never get why certain people need to use deceit to obtain what they need. They simply don't understand this signal. They think that people will work hard to earn what they desire if they really want it. To make things happen for them, they will develop into their best selves and hone their moral fiber. Regretfully, manipulators are experts at stepping over other people's boundaries. How? By imposing their terms on people against their will. They push people around and make others do things for them in order to get what they desire. They unintentionally put their own duties onto others, which makes them feel driven to establish dominance in their interactions. However, they control their manipulative instincts when they are among Sigma INFJs. Why? Since Sigma INFJs don't hesitate to impose penalties. Third, making illogical decisions when speaking with others. The Sigma INFJ never finds logic in the arguments made by irrational debaters. These guys merely engage in argumentation with the Sigma INFJ. They are not motivated or driven to come to an agreement or compromise. However, what motivates them to act in this way? Maybe all they want to do is show off how smarter they are than the Sigma INFJ. These individuals make absurd remarks about Sigma INFJs in an attempt to refute them because they are so terrified of their potential. By discrediting their values and squandering their time on trivial disputes rather than owning up to their mistakes and supporting the initiative of Sigma INFJs, they risk upsetting Sigma INFJs. How come, as a Sigma INFJ, do you still tolerate these circumstances? The second factor is people's propensity for disloyalty and infidelity. Because they are loyal to the people they love, Sigma INFJs honor their commitments. And sure, they are willing to overlook or forget what they said a few days ago. After all, practically everyone has an understandable inclination to forget or ignore relationship duties. They don't understand, though, how some people can breach their word and then act as if nothing had occurred. They don't understand why some people have the audacity to be dishonest and unfaithful while pretending that everything is well. Sigma INFJs won't be hesitant to speak with these individuals. They're not hesitant to talk about behavior patterns they don't understand, which probably makes those who are unfaithful uncomfortable. First up, the need for small talk. Finally, the need for others to strike up a conversation to fill unpleasant silences is something that has never made sense to the Sigma INFJ. The Sigma INFJ finds it incomprehensible that individuals constantly want to get in touch with them for a brief conversation. Although Sigma INFJs are capable of striking up a conversation, they don't always have the time or energy to do it. The problem is that weather is the last thing that Sigma INFJs want to talk about because they have too much on their minds already. They engage in small chat and may even become adept at it since they see it as a social custom or routine. However, they have a secret curiosity about what goes on in people's minds. Furthermore, they fail to see why other people's preferences differ from those of the Sigma INFJ. Are you perplexed as to why small conversation is required to populate these islands as well? The Sigma INFJ's inability to fit in with other social circles is the root of their perplexity in all of these circumstances. Their disinterest in fitting in and sacrificing their morals to appease others is the root of it. However, as a Sigma INFJ, are you familiar with some of these standards already? Why did you act in that way? 